Greetings my brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Today my topic is fear of the future. We know how when we think about our future, our children's future, we all become anxious. But the devil's weapon is creating fear. So fear is the devil's weapon to destroy you. And fear and anxiety are not of the children of light, but fear and anxiety are the weapons, the means which the devil uses to harm our human souls. Today we'll see how we see from scriptures we see the word do not be afraid by our creator God who tells his creatures what may come 365 times. Do not be afraid of whatever it is. But always give thanks and in prayers and in humility see the will of our creator God. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we being human we always get worried about our children, what they would be when we are gone and what kind of sicknesses we have to go through, what kind of challenges in the society we have to go through. But everything would go away when we trust in God. But the devil tries to dilute our faith by bringing this fear and anxiety. And that is the time we need to step up, rise, even if you have been anxious, if you have been fearful, we need to get up from that fall. Go back to our rooms, on our knees, contemplate on the word of God, where he has said, do not be afraid, I am with you, I know the plans for you. So when he has given that hope, why don't we claim that? When we claim that, the devil has to flee. The weapons of the devil, the fear and the anxiety will be destroyed. Today, let's see from scriptures how we can do that. Now in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1, Do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. My brothers and sisters, what else do we need? When God has called you by our name. So he has called me Agnel. You don't have to be afraid of anything. When I look into these words, then I just once again claim this word of God to give me that strength to go through the suffering, to go through that condition what I am in. But when he says you are mine, so he knows what if I have something the best of everything and then he says that's the end of it today you have to come. My breath is gone and I'm gone. But when we take the privilege of going through that suffering, waiting in patience, the holy will of God to happen, always surrendering your free will to him, then I am strengthened to face the challenges and continue what I do according to his holy will. Let's go to another uh, verse in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. And this is one of the strongest scriptures. You can just count on it. Keep it in your mind. Memorize that. Keep it with you. And that can give you the strength and courage. It says, he will never leave you or forsake you. My brothers and sisters, this is the words of our creator God. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. I will never leave you or forsake you. In whatever condition, because our ultimate in our physical life is the breath of life, is our passing away. When he says, I am with you till the end of time, 
nor forsake you at even after that. So we can boldly face the ultimate challenge which is death. Even if we have to suffer those three days. But we will definitely, God says, he is with us that right from the time. He is with us during that suffering, during that three days as well. Let us look at uh, the first letter of John, chapter 4, verse 18. Perfect love casts away all fear. So the love of God is perfect. And when we claim that, when we meditate that, when we contemplate that, then we would become fearless. My brothers and sisters, the ultimate challenge is to overcome fear. Fear of death, fear of future, fear of anything. You should be prepared. We should be prepared to face death, the ultimate challenge, at any moment of our lives. I was just going through uh, yesterday uh, in the social media platform. Uh, it, this happened uh, in the state of Kerala in India. We had a very good saint by name of Saint Alfonso, one of the few Indian saints. In that parish, one of the priests who was celebrating the Holy Kurbana, the Holy Mass, the Siro Malankara rites, facing the cross of Jesus. He just dies during the Mass. What a glorious death for him. I'm sure he would have been praying to the Lord to take him as he carries out his work, being his hand and feet in conducting that Kurbana. My brothers and sisters, God is glorified. In whatever we do, in whatever we say, think and act. Now in Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And in all things God works for us for good according to his will. So when you look at this priest who passes away during the celebration of the Holy Kurbana. So God knows this verse from Romans. Chapter 8, verse 28 is very apt. It says, And in all things God works for us for our good according to His will. Now let's look at Psalm chapter 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. I'm sure this priest who passed away, he would have contemplated this word from Psalm chapter 18, verse 2 many a times. The Lord is my rock. When I am at the rock, I don't have to worry about anything. I'm clinging to the rock. So no storm can wipe me away from there or sweep me away from that rock. So my fortress and my deliverer, even if I am carried away from that rock, he is just delivering me. But for the physical world, we are dead. But for our spiritual world, our Lord is waiting for us in open arms, embracing us and keeping us in eternity. Let's look one of those old uh, testaments from the prophet Jeremiah. Beautiful word. Chapter 29 verse 11. For I know the plans for you. I know the time when you came into, you were conceived in your mother's womb. Right that time when we were just a single cell. God knows us completely, our start time, our end time, and what are the expectations during that physical journey, and then how we can be with him for eternity. So God knows our plans, whatever we might do, but if we surrender to him and seek his plans and ask him, Lord, help me, give me that grace to fulfill your purpose, your purpose on this journey so that I am pleasing to you and that would give all those confidence strength and courage let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 to 2 I am the prisoner of the Lord bear with one another with love when we consider ourselves as prisoner of Christ 
that means we have to be humble we have to be giving away anything and everything what a fellow human being asks and need as a need for it so we are prisoners of christ therefore if we become prisoners of christ we will love our fellow human beings and just like jesus now in habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it will speak as yes, my brothers and sisters our physical eyes cannot see what jesus has unveiled for us in the holy gospel in the holy scripture but the time is not at there but i can tell you when we go and attend the holy eucharistic celebration there are people within our church community who can see the angels ascending and descending serving our lord our creator god they have the spiritual eyes opened when they close their visible their eyes the physical eyes to the visible world their spiritual eyes are open to the invisible world and there are people who are doing that because they have got that vision and this is what we have to claim from the word of god from the book of prophet habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it will speak so this is our hope for the future when we want to have think something about our future we need to think how our spiritual eyes will be open to see the glory of god in the holy eucharist in our own lives and within our hearts how we can hear the voice of god Yes my brothers and sisters we are humans and we are fa- frail and we are weak and we are bombarded with so many different voices we seldom hear the voice of god but if we contemplate if we use all our five senses in meditating and contemplating and proclaiming the word of god the appointed time will surely come when when we will see the glory of god Now in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36 to have this thought we need to have endurance and that endurance will be given to us according to the will of God and when we have the endurance to face this we will continue with our journey and that's what is mentioned in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36 Now in proverbs the beautiful the famous proverb everybody who trusts in god will quote this proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding acknowledge and he will direct your path we need to acknowledge that we are creatures we are weak we are frail we don't own anything all we want is our free will to believe or not to believe and that's it the rest everything we are only stewards of what god has gifted us so when we trust in his providence and surrender everything to him and acknowledge that we are only stewards of what we have then God will put us in the right path and this is what we find in proverbs chapter 3 verse 4 to 5 trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding acknowledge him and he will direct your path let's look at another uh, verse from psalm 56 verse 3 When I am afraid I put my trust in you my brothers and sisters when you think about the future we all get scared as human person but then whenever we get that fear we should have that heart and mind and will to go to the scriptures and seek the word of god and claim it and if we are doing that things change 
by leaps and bounds. Now in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in every situation, but by prayer and petition. So God has asked us to pray. He has asked us to petition all our needs. But then our petition should be like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, if you can take this cup of suffering away from me, but not my will, let your will be done. And we need to be praying the same way as well. We need to tell our Father God what we need. What all we require, we can tell him. And it is our duty to ask him because he is our Father. Just like the way when we are children, we tell everything to our father, to our parents, to our father and mother. So likewise, we need to tell him all our needs. But it may not be because of our human mind, our ideas, our needs, our wants, everything would have been corrupted because of our affinity towards evil and towards the flesh, towards the worldly pleasures and towards our own selfish gains. But if we surrender to the will of God and ask him, Father, let your will be done. And he will listen to our prayers. And he will give it at an appointed time. But in his time, he will give it to us. We need to acknowledge that fact. Lord, in your time, let your will be done in my life. And that would be the surest way of fighting this anxiety and thinking about the future. Now, in John chapter 14, verse 27, do not be upset about anything, but remember my peace. Because Jesus has said, I give my peace not like the peace the world gives you. If you have my peace, you will rest in me. So we need to claim on that to rest in him. In whatever situations we are in, in whatever time we are in, whether we are at office, we are at home, we are sleeping, or we are anywhere in the earth, we have to understand that God's presence is omnipotent. He is present everywhere. He is present in every creation of His. But the only love He has given is for the human person who is made in His own and image and life. My brothers and sisters, with this verse, we will rest on him in his peace. And that is the way we will fight this fear of future and the anxiety. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoy this.